In the world of filmmaking, the right lens can make all the difference. D-click aperture ring, smooth 180 degrees focus ring, weather sealed, gimbal ready, and the most beautiful T1.5 are only some of the things this lens can do. 65 mm is somewhat of a strange focal length. It's definitely not the 70 mm we're used to, and it's definitely not the 50 mm. And unless using one of your photography lenses, you twisted your 24 to 70 to a weird location like 65 mm, you probably never shot with it. Contrarily, in the world of cinematography, when it comes to cine lenses, 65 mm is a very, very common focal length. Most prime lens sets would have usually a 45 mm, a 30 mm, a 65, and then somewhere like a 80 or 100 or 120 or 135. So 65 mm, it's definitely very common in the cinematography world. The reason? It allows you to capture the subject and what's around it, but also keeps that beautiful compression that any other lens like a 45 or a 50 or a 30 wouldn't allow you to get. And well, by now you should probably know that my favorite lens of all time is the Helios 44-2, which is a 58 mm. And although it's not a 65, it's pretty close to it. You probably can't see much difference if you're shooting a 60 or 58 mm and a 65 mm. And this specific look, it's what keeps me coming back all the time. The ability of capturing wide and portrait shots while keeping that compression and a beautiful depth of field. RX really needed to release this lens. There was a kind of a missing gap in between the 45 mm lens that I love and I shoot on on a daily basis and their 150 mm lens. There is nothing in between and the 65 mm is what they needed. So when they reached out asking me to try this lens out, you know, this is one of my favorite lenses to shoot pretty much anything with, so it was no brainer. And similarly to the 45 mm lens, what I really love about this, that I'm shooting this video right now, the 65 mm just released lens, is the colors and the image that comes out of this thing. It is incredible that you can now buy these kind of lenses for just over a thousand US dollars. I'm right now in the process of creating a short film only using this specific lens and I kind of wait to show you guys this one. It's gonna take you a few more weeks, so definitely hit the subscribe button and the bell button to get notified whenever that comes out. With that said, I wanna say thank you to Arix for sending me through this lens. This is not a sponsor video, but they have been supporting me throughout my cinematographer career. So I really appreciate the opportunity of trying these lenses out. With that said, I will always tell you guys if something I don't like, and one thing I am not a huge fan about these lenses, although it's kind of normal in cine lenses, it's the weight. This 45 millimeter lens from Irex is just over 1.2 kilos. The 65 millimeter, it's almost 1.3 kilos. So it's pretty similar weight. But when you're carrying these two lenses in your backpack with your camera and a couple more lenses, the weights really adds up. And although as a running gun filmmaker, I always try to keep my bag light, I gotta say that I would rather keep my bag a little bit heavier and being able to shoot with this kind of image and quality. Could I reach something similar with a Sigma or a Sony 2470 and just zoom in and out? I could probably get something similar, but I'm not gonna get exactly the vibe and the mood that I get. And this is what cine lenses give you. They allow you to create a very specific mood and tone within your film. And this is what I love about prime cine lenses. As of right now, I'm only shooting on prime cine and vintage lenses, and I still love it. I don't care about carrying a little bit more weight on my bag, as long as I know that the lenses I'm shooting with, they're made for video and not for photo. And that is the massive difference between cine lenses and just photography lenses. I will actually be making a video about this topic because I feel like a lot of people just don't understand the value of a cine lens compared to a photography lens. I also really like the fact that you can balance this lens and a Sony a7S III on a gimbal without any trouble. I have a Crane 4 from Zhiyun and literally it took me a couple of seconds to balance this whole thing up and it works perfectly. I shot a few things for clients and fashion projects lately and this lens just looks incredible. With that said, you do need a bit more of a bigger gimbal. I don't think small gimbal can handle this weight because the Sony A7S III is I think eight or 900 grams plus a cage that I have on all the time plus the lens. I'll come up to like two and a half kilos. So you definitely need a beefier, heavy gimbal 
like the Crane 4 or RS3 or 4. Just some of the high-end gimbal will be able to handle this setup like a champ. With that said, if you guys want to check out this lens, they just released it. It is linked on top of the description and I'm very excited to be reading this film. So again, subscribe, leave a like, turn on that bell notification. And I'll see you guys in the next video next week.